Hey, what's up guys? Thanks for stopping by the channel. Uh, so I'm actually starting a new uh, pilot project where I'm meeting local watch enthusiasts in the Southwest Ontario area. So today I'm actually fortunate enough to be sitting in the home of Mike, a local watch enthusiast. Mike, hey, thanks for your time. Thanks for coming over. Thanks for coming to my house. This is great. Yeah, I think we, when did we actually meet? I think we actually met a few months ago at the first inaugural Watch Beat Ontario event. That's right, that's right. So I was in the area and I had stopped by Derek Deer's um, store and just by happenstance, I walked in and I sort of walked up to the store and I noticed there was people in the store. So I thought I'd go in and check it out. I walked in and I thought I walked in in a private event, but it turned out it was the first inaugural Watch Beat Ontario meetup, which is great. So I've been to the second one. Um, that's where we met and uh, sort of from there we started talking about doing something like this on your channel. Yeah, great. And uh, I understand that you're an avid collector uh, of many different things. And today we're going to be talking specifically about your Tudor watch collection. And actually a quick wrist check. I'm uh, wearing my recently acquired Tudor Black Bay 58. Uh, Mike, what are you wearing? So I've not got the Tudor on. I've got a Casio World Timer on. I'm rocking the Casio. I like the Casio. It's great for sort of hacking around. So I thought I'd focus on the Tudors and, and keep it off my wrist for now. So. That's awesome. So uh, before we get started, uh, how did you get into uh, watch collecting? So watch collecting, um, my first watch I had was that my parents gave me as a kid uh, was a Timex. I can still sort of remember. I believe it was a white face, black markers, but it was it was a manual wind, probably like a pin and post movement in it. Um, but from there, I'd sort of I'd sort of um, move more into the sort of the mechanical side of watches. Um, I'm a kid of the '80s. So I grew up watching things like Miami Vice, where you'd see all these fancy watches and cars, and and that sort of twigged my interest. Well, thanks for sharing a little bit about your uh, your kind of your watch journey. And uh, for today's video, we're definitely going through uh, the Tudor lineup. And I know you have three pieces that I think very well represent Tudor's heritage. So why don't we start with the first one closest to you? Sure. That looks like your Tudor sub. So it is the Tudor sub. Yeah, it's the first watch that I bought. Uh, again, when I was 17 years old, I went into a local jeweler whose name was uh, Rudy Paff or Paff Jewelers. They're still here in London, Ontario. Yeah, and good, I went in to look at, I thought he'd also carry Rolexes, and I saw this on his shelf. It was a Submariner. He, he talked to me about the Tudor line because I knew nothing about it. And his basic, what he basically told me was it was part of the Rolex line. Um, it was a, the dollar value was less, but basically the case, the crown, and everything except the movement was Rolex, so including the um, the bracelet as well. I mean, the movement in this one is, a, is an ETA 2824-2, so, you know, standard movement you can get parts for. Uh, and he, I remember the price was $1,100, and he looked at me and he maybe took pity, pity on me as a 17 year old, he said, I'll give it to you for 900 bucks cash. So, nice. I ran down to the bank, yep. um, withdrew everything I had saved, $936 of tax, I think it was, Handed, carefully handed him the cash over and in return got the watch. So this one is the one that started me down the path of collecting. And uh, I, like I said, I've had it since I was 17 years old and it's been everywhere. It's been to Europe with me. Uh, it was briefly, I was in the Canadian military reserves. I've done a few military exercises with it because mm -hmm. when you bought these things, they were tool watches, they were tanks. I would never think twice about not swimming with this watch or I mean, I never scuba dive, but I, I could take it diving. It's been in the ocean. Uh, so yeah, so it's got it's got a really good, really good memories with it as well. Yeah, and I do believe that uh, the Tudor subs were commissioned to a lot of different military personnel. They were that's within right. North America, including the Canadian military. I understand. Yeah. I believe it was the Canadian Air Force. I believe uh, did have Tudor reserves. Of course, the famous one is the Snowflake Hand Tudor sub that I believe was part of the French um, naval forces that everybody looks for. So yeah, it's definitely held up very well. Yeah. So I quite enjoy it. Yeah, and I bet uh, you're happy you made that $900 investment now. <laughs> Very much so, yes. it's uh, The market has gone crazy on these things. So, yeah. it, you know, at the time, I think I did the calculations and compared the time frame. And if we priced it in today's dollars, I think it's around $2,500. So still well under what um, Tudor sell for today on the market. So Yeah, for sure. But it was a good deal. I, yeah, I don't regret that one. I don't regret that purchase at all. Yeah, that's a great story. So why don't we transition a little bit and let's talk about your second time piece. Sure. Here. So this looks like your uh, Tudor chronograph here. Yeah, so this is a Tudor chronograph. 
Uh, it's called the traditionally called the Monte Carlo. This one has what they call the baseball plate indices. It's a two register. Uh, the movement in this one, I believe, is a Val Jewel. I can't, I'm not good with references, so I can't remember the exact reference in it. It is manual wine, 17 jewels. Uh, this one, uh, my wife actually bought for me uh, from a friend at work. So oh, wow. this one has a pretty good story too. So a friend of mine uh, who I worked with, it, um, he bought this off of an army buddy of his. So an army buddy was hard up for some money, apparently the story goes, when they mm -hmm. were in Germany with the Canadian military. And he needed some cash and he needed quite a bit of cash. And for collateral, my understanding is Ernie said, well, I'll take, I'll take your watch as collateral for the loan I'm going to give you. And he said, okay, gave it to him. And the story goes, he couldn't come up with the money. So he said, keep the watch. That's fine. Uh, so this watch through, through the seventies and I think the early eighties as well was in Germany. Uh, the fellow I worked with, he uh, was a Canadian uh, military mechanic. So he used to work uh, on tanks, leopard tanks. So he's got stories of being in Germany, wearing this, working on leopard tanks. So it, it kind of tells you how tough these watches really were. And they really yeah. weren't meant to be sort of um, babied like some people do now. Like they, they were meant to do work. So uh, yeah, he, you know, he, he drove around Germany. He uh, had a really good time, wore this on exercise. And then I guess it sat for years in his uh, in his upper drawer, um, dresser drawer, like most of these things do. And we got talking about watches one day, and he actually owned a, or owns a Rolex root beer. Um, oh wow, nice. Yep, really nice watch. And he said, "I have this old Tudor. I never wear it. Would you be interested in it?" So I remember he brought it in, and it came in a purple um, Crown Royal bag. Which <laughs> classic for people that are not from Canada. Crown Royal is a local whiskey that we have. Um, the bags, most kids had the bags when I, for marbles. Uh, and again, I talked to my wife about this and she uh, said, well, I'll tell you what, go get it appraised and see what it's worth. So he did. And he came back and unbeknownst to me, my wife, cause I had talked to her, mm -hmm. um, was talking to him and said, she bought it for me and said, I'll take it. And just sight unseen bought it. It's one of those ones I'll never get rid of. It's got a great story to it. Hopefully one day if I pass it on to somebody, it can have an equally great story uh, in the future as well. So, yeah. yeah, it's a great piece. And honestly, this is actually the first one I've seen in person. So okay. congratulations. Yeah. No, thank you. Okay, so we started off with like the Tudor sub and then we went to the chronograph. And now I think you actually picked up one of the uh, more, I think, divisive pieces from the Tudor lineup, and that's the P01. So why don't yeah. you tell me about how you came across this piece? So the P01, so this is the watch that was introduced this, at this year's Basel Fair. So uh, I bought this on Black Friday, and my intention was not to buy this at all. So I went into, my wife and I take Black Friday. That's my off. problem, by the way. Yeah, fair <laughs> enough. My wife and I uh, went to... Uh, uh, one of the malls in Toronto for our sort of annual Black Friday shopping trip. We take every every Black Friday off and we go down and just sort of chill out. And I went into the authorized dealer not expecting to even see this piece mm -hmm. uh, in, in that particular mall. And I walked in the door and I just happened to say, do you have, would you happen to have the, the, black, the Tudor P01 in? And she said, just a minute. And she walked behind uh, the back room, came out with this thing, and showed it to me and I, first of all I couldn't believe they had it yeah and she said to me you know we don't display these the ones I've sold to are generally going to collectors and she showed she we took a look at it and I instantly just started to shake and I thought oh wow this is like this is incredible this sort of appeals to me because it is um, divisive it is different you know I don't like necessarily always the mainstream things and uh, I texted my wife and said, what do you think? And she said, just do it. And I said, okay. So I went and purchased this one. And I hadn't even had this 24 hours when you and I met because I took this one to the Watch Beat Ontario meet. Yeah. And I remember people were, I remember walking in and people were saying, we were just talking about this and it sort of got handled through the group. And, uh, and it's, a bit of a, it's a bit of a popular item when I, when I attend these events for sure. Um, everybody likes to see it because it is something sort of different. Again, it is a divisive marmite watch they call it because yeah. i believe you either like it or you don't like it i i love it because i think it's so different i like it because it's uh it's a prototypical watch there is a history behind this one um 
These were apparently were copied for a long time. Nobody even thought this existed. They thought this was just sort of a Franken watch that people were making and making up the history. But Tudor came out and and brought it to Basel World along with the, the prototype and displayed it for people and, and went from there. So yeah, so that sort of that sort of completes the trilogy of Tudors for me. So I don't know if I'm a Tudor collector or a collector of watches, but it's just sort of worked out that way. So there is a bit of a heritage, the lineage there for sure. Yes, and if I can just add, um, for that particular watch, I'm glad you brought it to the Watchbeat Ontario event because that's something when I saw the stock photos online and looked on the forums, I dismissed that watch fairly quickly. But after that's trying right. it on the wrist, I have to say it's very comfortable. It, the head of the watch just plants on your wrist yeah. and it gives you really nice wrist presence. So I got to say, I'm actually kind of a fan of that watch right now. And I think a lot of people find that. I don't think the pictures do it justice. Um, mm -hmm. Different groups have written about it. I mean, Houdinki's got an article on it. Um, and it's actually really is comfortable. Like, it looks like it'd be clunky, but it's not clunky at all. It's, it's really comfortable to wear. Well, great. Uh, Mike, thanks so much for sharing your story. Again, I think this is just such a nice cross-section of Tudor's heritage. And it's wonderful to see these watches in person. Um, thanks for sharing your, uh, your amazing watch journey with us. Um, and I appreciate you inviting me to your home. So again, thanks a lot. Well, thank you for coming to and I appreciate it. And good luck on the new series. Hopefully you can get some other collectors in and, and they'll show you their collections. Yeah. So guys, uh, thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. If you like this content, please subscribe. And let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see uh, more videos like this in the future. Until next time, guys. I'll catch you in the next video.